person and uh, and you know that's wonderful to see the students mm -hmm. and uh, the topic that i have chosen actually is a kind of a con that concerns each one of us at some point of time uh, so, you know, I think uh, that might take all of your interest and hope all of you enjoy through the journey. And I would appreciate uh, like if you can give me a good feedback, uh, opinion about whatever you thought. So that would be wonderful when we mm. can have a discussion. So uh, can I just uh, share my screen, please? Yes, you can. You have to sh press share screen. Only one brief mention before you start. Uh, I will do the recording and I will take uh, screenshots during our okay. session. Okay. So Thank for you. for everybody, you have to be aware that you'll become famous on Facebook <laughs> and so on on all the possible <laughs> medias because because. Uh, this uh, is not only the place where we uh, post um, uh, activities which are of personal interest, but we also post professionally related material. So this is uh, being present here. It means that you consent to this. So thank you. And uh, we listen to you. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, my topic, as I said earlier, it is about visualizing women, an epitome of power and beauty. So uh, the topic itself, uh, may I just, uh, just a moment? Yeah. Uh, so the topic itself, you know, it, en uh, it engrosses us when we think about women because feminism doesn't say that we are a, a kind of a people who are weak and uh, dominated, but it says that we have to change the perspectives and thought process looking at individuals as uh, said as women. So here, uh, as you can see, very rightly said that if you educate a man, you simply mm -hmm. educate an individual, but if you educate a woman, you educate a whole nation. So, uh, you know, that's a, a something that which is very interesting. And of course, the good news is that all of us at the present time are quite lucky enough that we do not belong to a, a particular kind of a, a, a you know, a, a kind of an age where uh, particularly my moms and my grandmoms, they had such a difficulty in, uh, you know, getting themselves recognized, getting a place in the society. But we at present have that uh, kind of uh, advantage, as I can say, that we can always have, uh, you know, over them that there is uh, certain places that which we have made for ourselves. But yet there are certain complications. Now, uh, if I'm to take a situation now, you know, uh, many of the students are there. There are also your colleagues who might be uh, moms. And so when we leave our children back home and go off to the office, maybe for the first day, so the feeling that, you know, children hugging us, that is not to leave us. And, uh, you know, they feel so much attached by our, uh, you know, leaving them. But that itself doesn't make us to uh, hold ourselves back and refrain from getting into a job. Despite all odds, we have been proving ourselves that at times we have we can go into any extent and even can uh, with the same uh, level of compassion, the love that we share not only at our homes, but also in the offices. Uh, the next thing is the three uh, R's that I would suggest that, you know, that empowers a woman that is rights, responsibility and respect. So land rights economically empower women, giving them the confidence to tackle gender inequalities. It gives them bargaining power in and outside of the home and empowering women in political participation to vote, voice opinions or run for office with a fair chance of election to make choices for oneself. Now, this rights, responsibilities and respect are very much, uh, uh, you know, aspects which we have dealt with. And at present, also, we have come a uh, quite a long way getting ourselves economically upgraded and as well as uh, but again the power stations that which uh, is uh, with the women is quite less because if you see to the percentage of the uh, you know men to the women so it is very less as compared that people uh, you know women getting places in the offices as uh, say for example as ceos or uh, some of the leading responsibilities that they can take so do you uh, think that, uh, that it is the incompetence of uh, women who are not able to do it? 
So probably not. But the point here is what I'm trying to make is it's always women who have marginalized themselves to think that way. Because you see, when we talk about negotiation, uh, you know, abilities, so it's always with the man who says that, yes, uh, I'm awesome. And so I can negotiate better. But whereas women, it's been, uh, you know, researched and there's a very less percentage of women who get into negotiations because uh, they find that negotiation is uh, not something that which we can do. And imagine a time when you have done, uh, you know, a lot of work which you should be credited for. And at the same time, one of your a male uh, counterpart has also put forth a lot of efforts. But the effort and the recognition that the male partner, uh, I mean, the male counterpart who gives himself, he takes all the credibility on himself. But supposing the same uh, credibility, if it is given to women, we would always say, no, this is because of the help of somebody else that we have got this kind of a thing. And so we don't uh, actually understand ourselves. We don't recognize our own potential. So when we talk about uh, visualizing women, so it's not about the gender inequalities that I'm talking about. It is the vision that the women has or should have in order to bring uh, up themselves, not uh, marginalizing themselves and creating a niche for themselves. Now, uh, as, I as I said earlier, that we have come a far away from all these kinds of you know, stereotypical thoughts about gender inequality, where we have always thought that women are the backwards uh, people. But it is not so now. Yet the complications that we have chosen for ourselves and we have brought in our, uh, you know, in our day to day activities, it's because we haven't uh, had that so much of self confidence, or you can say uh, a kind of exercising that kind of right and abilities where we can project and show that whatever we are in the right perspective, it is not about being boastful of what we are. So I think I can uh, relate a story to the students. I think they will be very much, uh, you know, if uh, some of you might have, uh, re uh, you know, could relate to it. Like, like in your school days, you know, when three of your, say, your younger brother is appearing for the exam, you are appearing for the exam, and your friend is appearing who is, again, a girl student. So three of you appear the exams while you come out of the exam rooms. So what happens? So your friend say, uh, when you ask your friend that, how have you done? He, uh, she says, oh, I could have done much better. You know, this, I missed some of the points. And when it comes to you that, how have you done? So you also feel, oh, I would have done much better. Perhaps I've missed some points. But when you ask your brother, he says, oh, I have done absolutely okay. So a lot of effort that we have put it all comes to a quite a lower level when it when we compare ourselves with others that is uh, in perspective of understanding our own potential okay so this is a kind of a thing which you know all of us have to acknowledge and so these are certain contrast uh, constraining factors for women empowerment that is heavy workload for women. Now, of course, this, I do not know, uh, of course, uh, over the world, uh, the patriarchal system is always there, nevertheless. But now workload of women is, uh, you know, uh, it's not about that they are bestowed upon, but they take more responsibility. So because they are more responsible towards things, they are more committed towards a particular aspect of dealing with things so that is why so uh, the uh, there are some you know they get overloaded with the work which they cannot again let go of it and that restrains them from getting away with it and isolation of women from each other so you know it's uh, it's a very uh, you know un uh, uh, found uh, ev evidence that the the women are isolated in themselves so supposing you say, uh, you see very many of the film actors you know the uh, female actresses they always have whenever i've seen the interviews they always say we are not friends to each other because there is always an underlining competition with each other because they have not to uh, they have or they always feel that supposing uh, i uh, somebody supersedes me what will be my position and similarly you know the uh, certain factors as uh, you know jealousy
certain factors as competition cert uh, na com we are in a competitive world nevertheless but yet na competition uh, we do not uh, uh, exercise competition within ourselves but we try to compete within each other and it's most of the time a woman competing with another woman and it's not in a very positive uh, aspect now success that comes uh, success and likability that comes to men were quite positively where on the contrary it doesn't comes in the same manner to women so and illiteracy of course so uh, though again i would say that illiteracy has also uh, like people have uh, you know understood the power of knowledge and power of education so definitely uh, they have they have not limited themselves to illiteracy but as if i talk of the indian scenario then we have a uh, quite a lot of rural backward people where illiteracy is uh, quite a lot uh, you know evidence and uh, for that reason also women have not come upward and traditional views that limit the participation now uh, here i would give an example of the indian mythologies if uh, you know i'll just uh, give you an introduction about that we have two epics okay which is uh, you know thousand versions of it in different languages uh, so one is the mahabharata and another is the ramayana so in uh, in a nutshell if i am to tell you mahabharata was a story of two uh, brother, uh, you know two uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, people who were uh, you know fighting uh, for the kingdom and the lady characters in that particular mythology were very strong characters and it they had the power to bring and you know uh, give a new framework to the kingdom and they could also make uh, you know they could stop uh, the war they could stop many things that happened in that epic but nevertheless they always fell into the traditional view of limitations of patriarchy they did not recognize their potential as ones that they could go ahead with and of course sometimes this is again a constraint that is no funds as i said negotiability uh, quality of negotiation is quite less with women of uh, uh, you know uh, women uh, fraternity rather than that of male so i uh, i cannot uh, justify that that they lack confidence but nevertheless uh, it has uh, been seen that we uh, you know it, there's always a problem of funds when it comes to women and disagreements and uh, conflicts among women groups as i said there is always an underlying competition among uh, women uh, among uh, each other so that is why what happens is there's a lot of disagreement and conflicting ideas that comes to in the women's groups and uh, of course there are certain structural adjustment policies where there are negative and sensational coverage of media now uh, say for example if there is a rape case and the victim itself she is so much victimized she doesn't even have the courage to spell out what has been uh, uh, you know what she has faced rather than she is always again thinking that what uh, my parents dignity will be lost if i spell out my uh, situation if uh, if somebody is looking down upon me then it's something some mistake that i have in me which i have to overcome in order to uh you know upgrade myself otherwise it won't be possible on my part to uh, you know move ahead so uh, these are certain factors which are uh, you know if we try and understand so this is in every uh, you know every individual or other i would say since my uh, topic today is based on women so all the women fraternity would at some point of time if you introspect would understand that these are certain negativity that we build in ourselves despite all odds and uh, so next thing that is about globalization now we all know that we are all getting into a globalized world where we are uh, getting more recognized among people around the globe and uh, so there this benefit they have it has a lot of benefits like benefits of the growing uh, global economy have been unevenly distributed leading to wider economic disparities the feminization of poverty increased gender inequality though often deteriorating working conditions and an unsafe working environment so uh, now having uh, all these things which was earlier there due to globalization has come a far way of uh, you know the misogynistic view about of people towards the uh, you know female genders has uh, to a lot of extent has 
uh, brought them, uh, uh, changed their perspective or changed their viewpoints. And this gender inequality also due to globalization has, uh, has been neutralized to some extent, until and unless I would again say that if women try to understand that they are not the marginalized sector, if they recognize their potential better than somebody else recognizing it for it, so that would uh, make them better individuals and more uh, prospective. And uh, the next thing I would say about, you know, all of us are very much, uh, you know, keen on watching, uh, you know, the, the social media where we try to put our pictures on and, you know, women uh, as, you know, at the body image of a woman. So women are portrayed as ideal in the media and anything less is considered unattractive. Now, uh, uh, women get slumped. A woman is uh, heavy labeled. A woman is not very uh, fair complexion. She doesn't have a very fair complexion. So uh, for all these things, she is not taken as a perfect woman. So a lot of aberrations in her. And that itself brings a complexity in her mindset that am I the woman who I'm supposed to be? Or there are so many, uh, you know, kind of uh, disabilities that I have because I'm not a fair person. I'm not an attractive person, which will attract the social media. So the perfect woman that is in ads, TV or movies has a certain body shape. It is always thin or at least in shape. So who, uh, you know, these days we have a zero figure concept. We all want to be of a zero figure. So for that, we have been sacrificing a lot with our food habits, uh, with our, you know, each time whenever we get uh, something very much, uh, we, we uh, you know, particularly in India, we, have, we are very foodie people. So, you know, but when we are thinking about getting our, uh, having that attractive look, so what we do is we let go of the food that we love a lot. So uh, in order to be in shape, and the same thing happens if you have ever watched Indian movies. So if you have watched fashion, if you have, uh, you know, so there you, you can just see that, you know, how in the cinematic uh, world also, that is, uh, there are certain realities which are portrayed in those pictures. That is the uh, protagonist of that particular film was a very high profile protagonist who, uh, who was, you know, very attractive and very shapely. And all of a sudden, she is superseded by somebody else who is more shapely and more better than others. So the entire scenario changes and she is totally into a depression stage. And she forgets about, you know, what is she for? So there is always a contradiction about what am I for and what I am doing. So if we, we never try to bridge this gap. We are always, again, in a just opposed situation. That is what I am and what I'm supposed to do. So because this intrinsic thoughts never, we don't introspect much about it because we will complicate our ideas more into it because we always have this underlining in our mindset that we have to look good. So they have flawless skin. As we can see, the advertisement that is shown are fair and lovely in India that says that the moment you put that uh, cream on your face, you look very fair. And, you know, it will be uh, absorbing all the ultraviolet rays and uh, it will be, it'll get, you will get rid of all the blemishes, wrinkles and so on and so forth. So people, uh, you know, women are very much attracted because again, the thought in their mind that I have to look attractive goes, which on the contrary is never a concern for men. So this is what is considered beautiful in the media world or in a world where we are trying to, uh, you know, uh, we are trying to uh, give a kind of a ventilation to a, uh, to a kind of a, 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 a arena where people are looking at us. What is our opinion about us is negligible there. So old women are almost shunned in the media because of their wrinkles. So until and unless there is some kind of a, uh, you know, advertisement which relates to old age homes or something, uh, you know, old people. So then only the wrinkled women, one or two might get a chance. So these are unattractive. So the media avoids them altogether. So advertisements show gorgeous girls wearing or using the object being offered. In reality, they have much more going on. So the picture is deceiving. So there's a common saying, looks are deceptive. And that's very true. When you look uh, uh, look at an actress, you know, when she is uh, beyond her uh, screen, where even she doesn't enjoy always being screened and all, always working on scripts, always saying those uh, dialogues which are scripted. So she has never lived her own self. 
So think about a situation, how difficult it is for a woman to, uh, uh, to live a somebody else's character, somebody else uh, being as someone else only for that uh, image that she want to carry uh, for the world. So that itself is quite uh, deceiving. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's always something that which is, uh, again, quite, uh, uh, you know, a, a perspective which the uh, which the vision of the women gets distorted sometimes. And that leads to quite catastrophic situations at times. Now, there could be an holistic approach to empowerment. Because, you know, we are, we are, having uh, said everything negative is not the point that I want to say here. Because we have to build in positivity. The only thing what I'm trying to say is having a vision. A vision about us, about women in general, and about an individualistic vision. Which should not be uh, under the, uh, you know, we should not be under the scanner of people. What we think about ourselves. How can we have a holistic approach to empowering ourselves? That is, of course, education is one of the basic things that all of us need. And, of course, political participation, where you can voice, you can value your voice. So most of the time, we, uh, we have a lot of thought processes, but those thought processes are restricted because we are not able to value our voice. Uh, even if we are voicing something, it is subdued uh, because maybe uh, someone else has spoken much better or has that kind of a dominance, which we have not shown uh, to be. And of course, there are certain asset base that we have to put and marketing. Now, marketing, again, that would that doesn't mean the sellability of a woman, but that means that the strategies, the negotiation that we can do, that understanding of our own potentials where we can place ourselves carve a niche for ourselves in the market scenario and credibility that is giving ourselves the credit for what we have done so every success that comes to us is certainly not the result of somebody else's approach to us but it is the result of our own efforts towards it so how uh, how is that that we give the credibility to somebody else saying that oh because of the help that i got from there so i could be placed here no, but we have to recognize that we had the potential in us. And of course, technology has enabled to, uh, to quite an extent to understand and be more skillful uh, and, uh, you know, move ahead with thoughts and, of course, the skills that we have gained. So all these, uh, you know, parameters, uh, though we have met, but there are lot many people who have uh, really not reached up to these parameters though it is quite understood by people that they are there to it uh, so the next thing is about the gender mainstreaming which is a very upcoming uh, and a globally accepted strategy for promoting gender equality so we have been uh, learning theories about uh, you know gender equality and we know that communication is something which is a kind of a glue which you know uh, which uh, 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 which uh, kinds of bridges the gap between any inequality that exists between either in uh, through gender or any of the organizations so uh, gender mainstreaming is some kind of a strategy that is being accepted these days in order to promote gender equality so it's a process rather than a goal of creating knowledge and awareness of and responsibility for gender equality among all education professionals in uh, engaged in tertiary education because you know the saying goes as charity begins at home so if right from the tertiary level we are not trying to inbuild and trying to make people understand that we all stand at an equal level so definitely we will never uh, come across such situations where we will be given the equality or can uh, you know voice uh, or value our voices for an equal strata. So as I said, it is not about the gender, uh, you know, inequalities that is done uh, among people, but it is sometimes uh, our own thought process which makes us unequal because we have marginalized ourselves by not promoting and understanding our own potential as to how we should go ahead with it. Uh, the next thing uh, that is, it is not an end in itself, that is gender mainstreaming is not an end in itself, but a strategy and approach 
a means to achieve the goal of gender equality in higher education institutions through sensitization and educating key stakeholders that the costs of women marginalization and gender inequalities are borne by all in the education sector as a whole from pre-primary to tertiary and lifelong learning. So learning never stops and so also the kind of understanding that is uh, uh, gender equality. So mainstreaming gender essentially involves systematic evidence gathering and analysis of the differential participation and completion of education by women and men, analysis why gender differences persist and sensitization of the stakeholders and decision makers makers to existing inequalities so these mainstreaming gender processes is something that uh, you know which is again as i said it's a strategy which is being built over the years in order to bring gender equality and misogyny and equality as i said the misogynistic view of uh, you know uh, the patriarchy is uh, is driven out to quite a lot of extent but yet we are quite far away to, uh, to uh, you know have the equal status so women, uh, women's full and effective participation and decision making in public life, as well as the elimination of violence for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. So and the flagship generation equality campaign, which calls for women's right to decision making in all areas of life, equal pay, equal sharing of unpaid care and domestic work. And uh, on end of all forms of violence against women and girls and healthcare services that respond to their needs. So this has a lot. Main, uh, gender mainstreaming has a lot of uh, you know uh, ambitious projects uh, that talks of gender equality. And uh, this campaign, Generation Equality Campaign, is again something that the present day youth can take it forward because they understand and you know they understand the disparity that is why does it exist. And as I believe. It doesn't exist because of anybody, but it exists because of our own understanding about ourselves, which is lacking. Now, uh, these are certain, you know, uh, things that uh, the women needs to understand that is having the decision making power. And uh, uh, now freedom of uh, movement. Now, you see, many a times uh, we are again, uh, you know, taken aback when we uh, tend to travel to, uh, you know, places. So we, we don't want to come out of our comfort zone. Most of the time we feel that uh, it would be difficult on our part. Now, I wouldn't say that this is what is being done uh, for everyone, but the percentage is quite low as compared to the uh, fraternity of men. So if we have to equalize our understanding, now, of course, there are certain uh, issues of, uh, you know, being, um, if we are talking uh, women being uh, equal to men biologically, now that would be, uh, you know, uh, highly ridiculous to think that way. Nevertheless, we are not trying to bring kind of a competition between men and women, but we are trying to understand that how can we understand our potential and work to the, towards it and access to education, access to employment, exposure to media and domestic violence. Now, this domestic violence is, again, a very major factor, which, uh, you know, is uh, sometimes, you know, uh, disrupts an entire woman's life. So you might be seeing a lot of times in the media uh, houses that is, you know, the projection that which is done through this domestic violences. And if I'm to talk about Indian scenario, uh, which, uh, you know, there are uh, a lot of things. I think uh, sometimes we are, they are exposed, sometimes they are not exposed and women are subjugated most of the times. That's only because of their own, uh, you know, uh, uh, not understanding their own behavioral patterns. That is how to work because we always look forward that what story we can build. Now, I will give you an example. Like uh, the other day, I was listening to an opera when, you know, talk, uh, when she talked about a woman. So she said that each woman, every time, whatever we think about, we think about what's the story it's going to build in. So she's, she was talking about her childhood days when she was very young and uh, she was trying to, uh, you know, celebrate Christmas. So every Christmas is a very, uh, you know, uh, a time uh, to uh, kind of a festive time for, uh, you know, quite a uh, few uh, all over the world and for a, uh, quite a number of people. So, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden she was called by her mother as she was the elder sibling. So she was told that we are not having any Christmas. 
so she said what about the santa claus she uh, her mother said that there was no santa claus coming to their house so uh, you know she went on thinking that what my story tomorrow i will not go to the school tomorrow because people would ask me how did i celebrate my christmas so uh, but what happened the next day when she opened the door she found so many gifts people coming to their houses with a lot of food where she never missed that is how uh, that she was not celebrating christmas so this thought that she was taught in her childhood she took it forward when she grew up so as a woman she thought that what a big lesson her mother had taught her the, that is uh, though we have uh, you know and the society that has taught her that is you know though, although they were uh, in uh, pow uh, poverty stricken they did not have money uh, to uh, enjoy the festivity of christmas but nevertheless this was a, such a uh, you know empowering way of showing kindness towards each other so this is how she uh, formed an uh, you know a group of people that they went to different countries and there they started giving uh, you know all those uh, um, you know uh, the uh, to make them celebrate uh, uh, in different countries to the underprivileged people so this is also a way where we can empower ourselves not thinking that what story we can build for ourselves but we can create a or carve a niche for ourselves in the arena where we we think that we are marginalized where we are not so we have to build in that kind of a confidence we have to build in other potential among us that is how are we trying to you know develop our skills in understanding about uh, that is uh, you know how we are as a woman that what am i here for and what am i doing so once and so uh, the worst thing is even if we understand the three w's that is what when and where that is what to do and where to do and why to do but we never understand what went wrong the other side of the story of the three w's so if we try and bridge the gap between what when why and what went wrong so definitely women will be more empowered and our vision towards ourselves will change so when i talked about you know chose this topic i found it something that which was well, very common because you know uh, understanding women uh, women getting empowered now uh, we we see a lot of uh, you know women who are empowered and uh, even if we think about ourselves as i said we have come a long way from our uh, ancient parents uh, you know uh, the generation earlier to us who were uh, really marginalized in the true sense of the term but nevertheless uh, yes there are a lot of complications that we have created for ourselves and by not understanding our own potential and giving a voice and valuing our voice uh, so uh, I, this is a kind of a picture that i show of all the you know successful women all over the world i think most of you might recognize also and so this is what i had to convey i think i have not taken much time so i was given 30 minutes time and i think i'm quite uh, close to that time uh, so this is all i had to convey thank you so much for your patience wow thank you so much thank you so much for a very compelling uh, presentation so um well i hope uh, everybody has enjoyed it i'm sure and uh, because we are such a we have such a large audience made up of our colleagues but also students uh, i would invite them to i don't know express their opinions uh, comments uh, or questions and i'm sure there will be a few <laughs> i have one but i am waiting for them to start i have no issues i seen the executive why well so i i should break the ice maybe uh, because you were talking about uh, uh, isolation between women uh and uh, and also the idea of competition and uh, well i was thinking that uh well we need competition on the one hand but uh, would you say that uh, i don't know at least maybe in india competition destroys solidarity between women or i don't know what shall we do about it i mean can we do without competition at all um uh, no as i said competition is healthy mm -hmm. competition is something which we all should look forward to but uh, what my point that i made is when the competition is between uh, each other that is you want to excel somebody else 
you are uh, like uh, when you w- want to excel uh, uh, and ra- rather you are not trying to understand that what is my potential because you see each one of us are having a different kind of potential and a different kind of a perspective towards winning a particular uh, game so uh, i may be a, a very uh, you know efficient uh, orator i may not be a very uh, efficient listener it probably could be so and but if i am trying to bring somebody down by uh, just uh, de- uh, demeaning the potential of others so that kind of a competition is something that which i am talk i'm not in favor of competition mm-hmm. is always very healthy and most welcome mm-hmm. because if there is no competition there won't be any self growth oh okay so, so then uh, we should not be aggressive in in our desire to absolutely. compete okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> now so who would like to maybe comment or uh, hello oh okay so uh mirala would you like to to comment or ask a question i would like to ask a question you. um you said that you gave an example like uh, for an actress that it's hard to for her to um, to take it the paparazzi and the uh, script that she needs to learn and be in someone else perspective i i think so i got it okay but i need to make a comment i don't want to be mean and i'm i'm sorry um i think this is hard for everyone for a kid for a man for one elder i think it's hard for everyone and i'm sorry for my comment but i loved uh, i loved all the presentation and i agree with it because no that's absolutely uh, great you know your question is brilliant uh because uh, the point there's nothing to be sorry about because you know you are absolutely right right from the kid and a man even a lady who has to enact somebody else is a very difficult situation but what i'm trying to say is when we are projecting ourselves in the media okay mm-hmm. so women particularly women so uh, all the advertisements that we see we see how shapely the women are they are all fair complexion they are not uh, very dark like you know dark women of course the concept has changed uh, but nevertheless yet to a lot of extent it is still there they would always choose uh, someone who is fair complexion to someone who is dark since my presentation was only visualizing women so i focused on men nevertheless it would be very difficult for any of us to play the part of somebody else on a scripted note on a tailor made uh, thing so we will not like to you know uh, mug up somebody else's character and be like that <laughs> yeah, exactly a uh, good example i thought of that is for mothers also because if i yeah. want to be a model i can because my height i'm i'm short but if i want to be a model i can do anything about it so i don't know maybe the the tallest girls with the perfect shape body can do it and they are pressed to do something perfectly and their life is hard out also so that's a kind of so that is what i'm saying when you say that i'm short and uh, you know it will be difficult on my part to be a mother so that is something which is uh, not to be taken into account as motherhood is something a very celebrated factor she is an epitome of compassion she is an epitome of love so uh, does it any does it have any relation to do with uh, somebody being short or tall so and the medical complications that the medical practitioners are very efficient in handling that so that should not never be a problem so this is what i wanted to convey that is you know understanding ourselves understanding our potential that is what is important it is not about who is marginalizing whom it should not be that me marginalizing myself so i have a son and so i always tell him this should be the way you have to succeed and all but if i had a daughter i would say that you should be liked by all with with all your accomplish, um, accomplishments so that's the message that we have for all women fraternity you know that is they should be liked by all more than uh, you know just building on success stories because women accomplish quite a lot and they have that potential they have that uh, uh you know kind of a uh, understanding about themselves which they should try to build it exactly thank you thank you so much thank you so much for the questions uh 
Hello. Okay. Yes. Hello. Do we have? Um, do we have? Please. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so first, I wanted to tell you that I love the entire presentation, and I totally agree with everything you said. It was amazing. And um, uh, I only have one question because uh, you said that we have to realize ourselves, uh, our own potential, and to believe in ourselves and to empower ourselves, but. What if, for example, I have friends, I, I do uh, try every day to, to trust myself and to build up myself, but I have friends who have uh, like uh, some problems with it. They realize they should trust themselves more and not let themselves beat up by the, the people around them and everything. And I'm trying to help them and to tell them, but how, how can I help them if it's something that you should do for yourself mostly? Like uh, steps or something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Now you see, uh, if I'm to comment on this, I would congratulate you that you have your own trust and you have your you know, confidence in yourself. So that's something brilliant. Now, when you are talking about your friends, that they are not able to, uh, you know, bring in that kind of a confidence okay. and they are always being focused by others. So think of a situation. All of you must be using Instagram, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, so you see the influencers in the Instagram, how much they influence your mind. So can we let go of that? Because we see the influencers. The influencer is very, as I said, that they are the, those influencers are taken only who have a very good body, who are perfect according to the advertisers. So do you think they should have an influence on our mind? Certainly not. We are individuals we have our individual perspective whether i am a boy or a girl i have my self-respect i have a self-esteem so that has to be uh, you know enhanced so why i should just uh, pay a heed to someone else who is giving a comment on me that how do i look doesn't matter i am beautiful for myself that itself says it all i need not have to prove myself to others I will prove myself only to me. So this is the message you can give your friends. That is, there is no point of, you know, getting, uh, proving uh, yourself to others. Why should you do it? Is it, uh, are you someone who is a, a yes man to others? That is for everything you agree to whatever people say. You don't have your own understanding about things. You have, isn't it? You are educated. You are grown up. So a child who is born, he, uh, the child himself has a, a kind of a perspective. He will not do the things if you are forcing him to do. So why should we force as grown-ups when we have not done in our childhood? So we should be all the more liberated. So this is the message you can give your friends. And uh, you can, uh, so I think that should solve the purpose. And, uh, right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you for your question. Do we have? Are there any any other comments or questions? We are happy to to listen, and, uh, engage in further debate. Question. Uh, I don't know if you talked about this because I couldn't join the. Uh, the Zoom from the beginning, I but I wanted to ask you what's your opinion on like um, how women are represented in comics, in video games, and basically in digital art, stuff like this. What's Correct. your opinion on this? See, my opinion is, uh, you know, uh, the women, if they look forward to it as a profession, that is fine. Okay? Like they are taking uh, it professionally, they are being paid for it. So they are looking forward to that kind of a remuneration. That is fine. But if they are asked to do it because, uh, you know, they, they are forced to do it, they should resist to it. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, you know, it's always mm -hmm. the advertisers who take the advantage of women who uh, and they make it, uh, you know, they influence the audience in such a manner that all of us start following them. That is, we should have a zero figure. We should look good. Our hair should be plated this way. Uh, we should have this kind of, uh, you know, uh, whatever the dress, uh, dressings that they do, the, you know, the attire that they use. So we always look forward to that, that kind of an attire. So my opinion to this would be, 
if it is a negative idea for the woman who is doing it, she should stop doing it. And of course, uh, there are certain exceptions because people are sometimes forced to do it because they have no choice having that kind of a profession. So that is again another aspect. And if they take it as a uh, as a positive thing that yes, as an engineer, as a doctor, as an uh, educationist, somebody is doing their job to earn money. So I'm doing this uh, in the I'm using myself in the video games to earn money. That serves the purpose itself. So that's again something that is positive. Right. I understand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can yes. hear you. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I have uh, also a little question. Uh, what What does uh, beauty means to you? See, uh, beauty might mean uh, to me. It means the inner beauty. That is, if I am uh, in uh, if I am in harmony with my soul, then I am beautiful. If my soul is happy with me, I am happy with myself. I am beautiful. I need not have very sharp features. I need not have very defined features. And if I show the compassion which I am uh, 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 I am supposed to show, if I have all the love for the worldly people, if I can show kindness to the world, that is beauty for me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Very nice. Well, so... Uh, if I may, I also oh, have please. a very little yeah. extra question because I also like see this trend and this movement uh, a lot even these days about feminism. And yes. most of the times I see like a bit contra contradictory uh, things because uh, women are trying to not let men do anything for them or something like that, and they call that feminism. But for me, uh, I consider more like this equality that you spoke about, that should be promoted through feminism. And uh, a woman accepting, for example, flowers or to be held by, by men or to be, I don't know, open the door or something like that should not be something, it should not be considered a feminist uh, a reaction, a feminist's reaction. And I want to know from you, like an expert, uh, what's your opinion about what feminism should be or is? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> feminism, you see, is a movement again. Now, it doesn't say that we have to, uh, you know, uh, only uplift men or there has to be a disparity between men and women. It's not, it says that we have to change our perspective to women. We have to change our thought process to women. So like, you know, as somebody opening the door, now whoever is, if the, there is a uh, door, uh, somebody is knocking at the door. So our first duty is we have to open the door because somebody is waiting. So if, if it is a man or a woman, a girl or a boy who opens the door, how does that matter? So the, there, the inequality doesn't come. But the inequality comes when we are not able to understand our potential, we uh, you see, uh, you if you can relate to a situation where you have, uh, you know, you have done some work, you have done a very commendable work, but when you are congratulated for that, you always say yes, thank you, but you know, it was the efforts of a team, mm -hmm. it was the efforts of my uh, some person who was very lucky for me, and so that is why I got it. On the contrary, it doesn't happen for men because you know. I don't say that it is wrong, but, you know, understanding and giving credibility to yourself is, again, something that which we have to understand and work upon. Because success, uh, if it is success, it has come to you. That means you have put your 100% efforts. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again very much. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So, well... I'd so, like to, I'm impressed. to ask a very short question. Uh, when you talk to your students, uh, do they ask questions? Do they have doubts? Do they like to hear about your personal experience? What kind of things do they find as most useful for their future, current and future work and even yes. personal life? Absolutely. You see, uh, actually, whenever we interact with students, 
um to be very honest i have a very good rapport with my students in my university around we have 8000 students in all we have you know but and uh, uh, if i'm to give you a certain number then uh, i'm almost uh, you know some way or the other associated with more than 5000 students so uh, the point is that is yes uh, you know something that if we if they understand realistic value for a particular thing that approaches them more rather than just giving theoretical understanding of things if i just oppose myself to be very idealistic but i don't practice the things which i am talking to my students so definitely you see uh, because my students belong to the same place that i am in so they are studying in the same university so definitely i am being monitored particularly a teacher is always being monitored that is you know because they have a lot of influence on the students so uh, so they ask enough doubts and sometimes uh, uh, you know uh, we have to relate certain uh, give them uh, some kind of a practical input that is uh, from our personal experiences which uh, maybe i have failed sometimes it is not that that i have succeeded each time i have failed sometimes but my failure story also i have to tell them not to glorify myself but to make them understand that this is the reality they have to understand and work for Interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, so, uh, okay. quite a, a dynamic meeting, I would say. Well, so, do we have any other contributions? Well, maybe if I may, very briefly, oh. uh, even though it's a, I have in mind a slightly general uh, question. Well, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I was wondering um, if you could add a few concrete, more concrete details about feminism in India. So, for example, to what extent are women's NGOs uh, engaged in uh, uh, academic feminist work that you've been referring to uh, in relation yeah, to your students? Yeah, okay, yes, yes. Uh, actually, uh, basically, we have a very uh, limited section of people who are working into feministic uh, uh, ideas, uh, you know, because uh, I'm teaching in a technical college. So that uh, that has more uh, of technical, uh, you know, like engineering subjects and all. So that has little to do with literature. But now we have introduced very recently a postgraduate, uh, you know, system. So we are trying to bring this gender studies into this. We have certain scholars, but again, the number I should say is a very limited number. It is not a very huge number who are working on this area. So this takes my interest. So I thought that, you know, uh, like uh, I'll just speak it up and uh, we'll have a good discussion on that. Uh, because each time we, when we talk about, uh, you know, feministic view, we always have taken one aspect that is margin B women being marginalized. But I uh, always uh, think, uh, you know, in a, a slightly different manner, that is, it is not always women being marginalized by the system, but it is women marginalizing themselves by not understanding and identifying their potential, which they should. There are many a times we have underestimated us. Maybe that is quite unknown to us. We have not... Uh, understood that we have really done so but it has happened so there is nothing to do with a kind of a, you know bringing a kind of equality as men being uh, you know uh, less uh, being less competitive than us or we being more competitive nothing to do with that but a perspective where we can identify ourselves as better individuals and not just marginalizing and thinking about ourselves as, uh, you know, we are helpless people or uh, we have to go by the stereotypical thought process that's been coming uh, all the way always. So this is what I wanted to convey. You know, we should change our vision and our thought process, our perspectives towards gender equality. Because whenever we talk about gender equality, it suddenly comes of a female gender. But it is not always so. Because female, uh, it's not always the female genders who are always, uh, you know, the uh, people who are having a problem. There are certain times male genders also. 
because and there uh, you know uh, there are males who are not able to express themselves because we are so much uh, being dominated by these idea that is uh, it's always the females who are marginalized females should be given some provisions there should be uh, respect should be more to the females not to the ma uh, men so men have totally you know somewhere we find that even men have less to express themselves so that uh, itself is some the disparity that we have created for ourselves which we have to work for. Okay. Well, I think Professor Marinescu would like to comment or ask a question. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, my question has to do, I, I mean, it's not really a question, but I was thinking that maybe our students would be interested in um, possibly what you have in India in terms of affirmative action for women, um, as far as I know, you have a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, things for um, Dalits, for example, or other categories, uh, uh, tribal populations, and yes. so on. Yes. Um, also, in terms of gender, I know you have uh, women's cells in universities, and I was wondering yes. whether you have some types of affirmative action policies. Um, for women, yes. that is, you know, maybe uh, promoting women um, in, I don't know, at the admission or any other mm. types of women uh, students, that is. Hmm. Yes, we have a women quota, though, that, that is called, there are certain reserved seats, 10% of the seats are reserved for the women, uh, you know, students. So that's a kind of an encouragement, they say, that is also in the schools as well as in the universities. Uh, but regarding promotions and all, there is uh, no such kind of a thing. People are valued by their own, uh, you know, credibilities. The more uh, they are, they have worked upon, if their research work is good, if they have shown good publications, uh, if their potential is good, they will be promoted. So promotions, there is no kind of, a, uh, you know, uh, like uh, giving more value to uh, women. But yes, uh, regarding admissions, uh, education, yes, there is some kind of a reserved seat. That is 10% of the seats are reserved for women voters. That's totally in the policy of the country itself. And of course, for the tribal women at all, we have free education for the tribal children. Mm -hmm. It's in many of the universities, they give free education to uh, the tribal children. And that's a free and compulsory education till the age of 14. So, and they are also given uh, midday meals and all because, you know, there are people coming from very, very backward areas where, uh, the, uh, you know, there is uh, no internet, particularly for this pandemic situation. So there are, uh, there is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's though by my name, there are swim MOOC courses. So those MOOC courses, the videos are taken to those people and they are, you know, in a, uh, in a kind of a movie show, they are shown those videos where the students uh, impart, uh, are being imparted with our information that which is uh, given to the subject. And if they have any doubts, they can uh, clarify it then and there. So that is how it is being done. Sorry, so just to, to clarify it, um, just for the students, you said 10% of, of uh, admission seats are for women overall yes. in India. So they want to make sure that at least 10% at least of um, young students are women. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, no, it isn't that. Uh, that's just a reserved uh, reservation made. Like supposing people are coming from a very backward place, so they are not able to meet uh, the education level. Say the fees also the uh, you know the whatever is the curriculum uh, uh, like uh, charges. So they are not able to. So so they they are taken a player, like they are given admissions under that reserved seat. Yeah, because we don't have uh, like that, that uh, uh, only 10% uh, of the women students will be enrolled. No, enrollment is free. But uh, the reserved place is only for underprivileged people or, uh, you know, where there is no girl child education. You know, there are certain very remote areas where uh, students are not uh, sent to the colleges at all. So uh, in order to give them some kind of an encouragement, these kind of reservations are made. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I would also like to ask you, uh, either in your in your university or maybe in other institutions, because I don't know at all. 
are there female writers or are there senior uh, women in key positions? And what if uh, you have any idea about educational policies? Um, on the other hand, uh, also in relation to what you said earlier, do you think that these, you know, these measures, uh, affirmative uh, contribution and reservation and so on, does this uh, lead to, I don't know, any sort of uh, less positive reaction from men or uh, how is it working? Uh, uh, no, uh, the reservation doesn't have, uh, yes, when they give it in uh, particularly government services, that is sometimes taken uh, uh, negatively because, you know, they feel that uh, why they should be given a quota when the education is same. But uh, in, like in the education sectors, where they're imparted education, there is no such resentment because they uh, even the men equally contribute. That is, yes, uh, students from underprivileged, uh, uh, you know, units should come and get the uh, education in the right perspective, who are economically backward, maybe. And uh, so all those and uh, the positions that I say. So, yes, uh, the number is less you know, in senior positions, but um, like the, not to the dean's level, but to the heads of the department and all. So there are women, but yes, number is quite less. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um. So I'm sorry if I if I keep asking questions, but this topic is really important for me. Like every day, I'm trying to <laughs> think about it. And I wanted to ask you one more thing. Um, how about uh, how are men educated towards uh, how they should treat and look uh, at a woman and how they should respect a woman? I mean, is this um, is there in India any kind of um, like a trend or something for mothers or and families in general to teach also the boys to respect women rather than just enhance the women's you know, to empower themselves absolutely brilliant question and you know that's very true now i don't have a very concrete answer for this because you know we all fall into the system of patriarchy it's which is all over the world so we can uh, that's what i'm saying the feministic view, it, uh, you know, should have, uh, you know, these days particularly, people are working more on changing perspectives mm -hmm. and thoughts rather than changing the inequality. Because I should not say that, you know, uh, as I, uh, I will reiterate, that as men are better than women, women are better than men. No, not at all. Let us uh, drive out that kind of an understanding. But our thought process, our perspectives should change. And even the perspective, not only of women, but even the men should change. They should consider women with equal respect. As I said, respect, responsibility uh, is something that which every, uh, you know, individual should look. So respect for individuals, not as a man or a woman. So I respect you, you respect me. So it's not about that I'm a girl, I'm a lady and you are a man. So if this kind of a parity exists, so I think things would change. Now, I can talk about my changing my perspective, my thought process, but I cannot guarantee about the change of thought process of men. They have to also think. Now, as I said, now, as I said that I have a son, so I always say that you be successful. Successful in the in doesn't mean in the monetary benefits because money uh, will, uh, we, can, we cannot always run behind materialistic world. But success, as an individual, I should succeed as a human being. The humanistic approach should be there in me. Similarly, I would say that if I had a daughter, which unfortunately I don't have, and so if I had a daughter, so I accept all my girl students as my daughters. So I would always say that you should be liked by all with your accomplishments. So this is what is something that which we all have to, you know, introspect. It will not come overnight. But if we introspect and we spread the message among people, so that would give a kind of change in our perspective because there might come up a lot of theories about gender uh, equality. There might come a lot of, uh, you know, 
approaches to gender equality but why is that that till now you know if i'm to tell you about some indian situations like in the ancient world we had a sati pratha now that sati pratha is the lady of uh, uh, like supposing a, a lady gets widowed so the in the funeral pyre you know we we burn the uh, you know the dead bodies in india the custom goes that so the uh, the female had to jump into the funeral pyre as a respect as a mark of respect to the husband now that was totally abolished you know lot of uh, there was a lot of things go, uh, you know which went on and that was abolished somehow so that was not there now you see but at the same time you see women are again considered they are again taken as you know uh, the animal instinct that is eco feminism so if we start talking about there are so many things you know because we uh, females are also uh, you know compared to as uh, women characters okay they say that uh, she is a cat so cats are referred to as women yes. we don't say uh, dogs as men do we say that we don't say that so there are you know there are so many things actually so these uh, the basic idea what i tried uh, you know which i whenever i get an opportunity i try is to just change the thought process that is we have to understand that we are all equal equal uh, by nature equal in our uh, you know in uh, in our upbringing equality i do not say that men uh, definitely we are biologically made like that that men are a little stronger physically than women so we can't defy that fact and cannot compete uh, with men we need not that's not required but what is required is the change in our thought process change in our perspective to understand each other whether a man or a woman respect for all exactly thank you again <laughs> thank you thank you so much. so an interesting uh, well follow yes, up i say. <laughs> for all of us yeah it's, i'm very happy that our students are connected to these realities and uh, well willing to learn yes. more and yeah this is an i think Absolutely. a good opportunity we can uh, academically also connect we have student exchange programs as well so um you know sometimes i can talk to my authorities and we can have some student exchange programs uh, and uh, we can work upon that also if we can collaborate on some areas where you know uh, the indian students can collaborate with your students and we can uh, do some kind of a research or get into some kind of conferences maybe uh so uh, you know we can uh, have a youth conclave where the students can participate because uh, so uh, uh, i'm thinking uh, towards that so uh, i think we can work on uh, that and we can have a better uh, academically we can connect more yeah i think it would be very a very good opportunity for all of us teachers and students yes so, well i'm looking forward to that yes sure enough we'll be doing it so i think uh, we are done with it or is there any other questions i would i don't mind <laughs> <laughs> anyway the discussion is not over we can continue yes. on another time and expand Absolutely. with other yes. colleagues uh, whom we yes. got in touch uh, and even our colleague uh, Uh, Professor Marinescu, she knows various colleagues in India, and she has attended uh, various oh. events. Uh, we also have even underway now an opportunity, but it it, it has, takes place in our university. It is called the Students Conference. So they also prepare papers and do oral presentations, just like in a, you know, in the um, uh, what what we have. Uh, already in place for academia and oh. uh, uh, definitely we can try to look for and to establish some bilateral opportunities of course oh. uh, we have to find what kind of topics because yes. uh, it is interesting that we are at such a you know considerable geographical distance but there are connections 
both yeah. in terms of development of uh, cultural and literary topics. So there are all sorts of possibilities and we probably just need to find the ways to accommodate the interests of students and even okay. our, let's say, uh, kind of uh, uh, specialized topics for the colleagues teaching in our own department because we are a very mixed one. Yeah, we have colleagues working on linguistics, on teachings, and also on cultural uh, studies. Uh, so definitely. So we want to thank all students who have been uh, present today. Uh, they are encouraged to reflect on the on your talk and even um, attempt to elaborate um, a text uh, in writing because we want to encourage them to uh, go from least active listening into uh, brushing up their writing skills. Um, and um, we also want to thank everyone, uh, Professor uh, Draga Alexandru, uh, we have another colleague, Vanna Masur, we have uh, Professor Alina Geshka from Galatz, and uh, all the students who have taken from their time, because now we don't have classes, but this doesn't mean uh, until next Monday. This doesn't mean that the world stops. We are still actively engaged and uh, your own presence uh, attests the fact that you do understand what means personal development um, and that uh, we want to uh, work together yeah, on, on topics which are relevant in our contemporary world. Yeah. So thank you everyone very warmly. Thank you for preparing and giving us um, this, uh, your insight into the topic. And we will look for other opportunities to, to connect with each other. Yes. And I also so thank want to you thank- you very much for the opportunity. I also want to thank uh, warmly to another colleague and graduate of our uh, Faculty of International Relations, Olivian Breda. He specialized in something which is uh, uh, just like astrophysics for me. Uh, so search optimization, search engine optimization, something uh, ferociously uh, remote, but uh, he will make available this recording on his blog and he will um, okay. make available, you know, very short lines about it so that other uh, individuals or even students uh, will have access to it. So thank you, Olivian, for agreeing to support this event. No so on my behalf, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Diana. Thank you, all the professors. And I had a wonderful interactive session with the students. So thank you, Professor Eliana. Thank you, uh, all other professors who have joined. And uh, thank you, each and everyone, for uh, the opportunity and the patience and the good interactions that we had. So even I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I'm also looking forward to get connected academically. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a great bye. day. All the thank best you, for all of you. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah, thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>